Hi, today we'll be taking a look at a really interesting lens. Now, uh, these lenses seem to have a tendency to divide people between enthusiasts and then haters. And I'm finding myself leaning towards a cautious enthusiasm after using this lens a bit. Now, I'm talking about this Canon FD 500mm SEC reflex lens. Now, in some circles, it's also referred to as a mirror lens, or more technically, it is referred to as a catadioptric lens. Now, let's first get some technical specs out of the way, as always, because this lens really has a couple of unusual features that you will not find on your normal, everyday dioptric lenses. And then we'll venture into the really subjective world of vintage lens review. Now, the focal length is a fixed 500 millimeters. Designed for the 35mm film format, that's a full frame uh, in a mirrorless or DSLR digital camera. The aperture is fixed at f8. Uh, the lens consists of six lens elements in three groups, which include mirrors. It is called a catadioptric lens system. Now, versions of this system and design has been in use since the 1800s uh, when they made, used it in telescope lenses. Now, the light enters the lens through the front uh, and it first hits a mirror in the back. Then it's redirected forward to another mirror through a group of lens elements and in turn reflected back through an opening in the back mirror onto the film plane or sensor in the case of a digital camera. Now this design limits spherical and secondary chromatic aberrations. It also features the super spectra coating on the lens elements, or also known as the SAC. Also, this uh, design allows for a lens that is really compact and has a really small form factor, as you can see here. This gives way to a lens that weighs a mere 740 grams, as opposed to the Canon FD 500mm f4.5 that weighs 2.6 kilograms. The lens is also very short for a 500mm, measuring only 146mm, as opposed to the Canon FD 500mm f4.5L uh, dioptric lens that is 395mm long. The diameter of this lens is 90mm. The closest focusing distance is 4 meters, which is in fact better than the 5 meters of the Canon FD f4.5 500mm lens. Uh, 500mm gives you a magnification of 1 to 7.14 magnification. The lens only has a 5 degree angle of view, it's really narrow. Uh, the lens facilitates these really cool little FD drop-in filters that you can use uh, the ND ones to, uh, to control your, your, your exposure because you don't have aperture controls. And these have a little uh, diameter of 34mm. Uh, the filter thread in the front, however, is 88 millimeters. The lens also has a very cool built-in lens hood. Uh, the whole thing is manufactured from metal with the rubberized focusing ring and the built-in lens hood sports this rubber grip as well. It features this really cool tripod collar which I like and it allows you to rotate the camera body between landscape and, uh, uh, landscape and portrait orientations without having to turn the lens which is really useful if you have a matte box on the front. The lens has a silver breech lock mount system, typical of the old FD system. The lens was first marketed in September 1978 and my copy, according to the code T801, suggests that this lens was manufactured in August of 1979. In 1980 it was replaced with a black design and quick release mount system of the new FD system. Now, if you wish to know when your FD lens was manufactured, uh, I'll link down below or up here to a short video that I made on this topic so that you can know how to date your lens as well. Now, the price of this lens currently is anywhere from $100 to $300. I took the lens out into the garden, as one does, to my son's rugby match. And also, I made a quick turn in a local park to test the lens out a bit. We're out here in um, what we optimistically call a forest <laughs> in Cape Town. It's actually just an urban park. Obviously when you're shooting a long focal length like this you need space uh, like I mentioned before. Now I have a clearing here. Um, I can uh, shoot out a little bit. There's some flowers over there. So I'm going to turn my attention to just some flowers over there. My guess is it's about 
30 meters or so away. But so I'm looking at some pink flowers and focusing, like you can see, I, even though I hold it on a monopod, it's still quite shaky. And that's because 500 mm is, uh, is, a, is a really long focal length. And more than that, it doesn't have image stabilization. Even though you have got IBS on a Canon R6, obviously it's not going to work very effectively when you don't have an R lens. So I'm looking at those pink flowers at this distance with 500 mm, everything is compressed because the flowers are not really separated from the background much. You're not going to get much in terms of background separation. But let's see if we just go out of focus. And that is where reflex lenses are really weird. You see that bokeh? That is the infamous donut bokeh that you get with the reflex lenses. And that's because of the way that these lenses are designed. Um, you get the, the real strong outline and like a, a hole in the middle, really like a, a donut. And there we go back and as it resolves, you'll see there you've got a, it almost looks like a little microbiology plate under a microscope, you know, and then so we go back into focus. So that is, uh, if you're looking at something that is quite um, far away, an idea I'm shooting at ISO 160 at a hundredth of a second obviously at f8 now if I was to turn my attention maybe to something that is over there is a leaf I'm just gonna focus on the leaf it should be about four meters away now I only because I'm shooting video and I want to keep 180 degree shutter more or less at 50 frames a second I'm gonna to go to a hundred uh, a hundredth of a second and I need to adjust my ISO to get the right exposure because now I'm shooting into the shade so I'm popping it up to a thousand six hundred ISO to, to manage the shade and like you can see there we've got our donut bokeh or detail and let's see once it resolves what if we can get a sense of separation I, sometimes difficult to gauge where you are in the frame when you're this close let's see how, how close we can focus that is four meters away. There is quite a bit of separation and the background uh, is about three meters away from those leaves. And look, there's complete separation, even at F8, which is, which is quite something. You don't really see the donut shapes there. Although there in the right hand corner, you do get a sense of that. So the bokeh is really interesting. For some people it's really off-putting. If you look to the leaf on the left, you'll see that even in camera you see it's almost like a double image that it creates then if I focus on the the bark in the back uh, what I can see on the screen and this is unreliable we'll have to look uh, on the monitor once we exported it uh, it seems fairly sharp I mean the out of focusness that I get there in the background is actually not too bad but everything has that outline it looks like a coloring book but it'll be very difficult to match that into a series of shots uh, maybe different scenes you can but if you for instance use uh, a 50 or 80 and then a 500 mil and the and the background changes this significantly I think that's going to be noticeable but if you have completely different scenes I think this you can use this to some form of a creative effect if that is what you're after let's first have a look at a short little vignette that I created using this lens and then we can enter the discussion This is my subjective take and should be taken as such and is wholly dependent on this very copy of the lens that I own, the condition that it is in, and then the situations in which, which I shot these images. This lens is not easy to shoot, but it is fun. It is light and it's compact enough to shoot a handheld, uh, but at 500 millimeters with a focus throw that is fairly firm and at roughly 180 degrees from four meters to infinity, 
it is easy to lose your composition with a simple act of turning the focus ring. Technically, one should be able to shoot handheld to shutter speeds as low as a 250 of a second, maybe even 125 if you really have a steady hand. But I don't have the steadiest hand and I felt more comfortable shooting the lens at 1 500th of a second. This, however, brings the challenge of a fixed aperture at f8, which means that the only remaining way of increasing exposure at 500th of a second f8 is to ramp up my ISO. Now with modern mirrorless cameras, this should not be too much of a problem, uh, like in the case of the R6 or the R, but if you use this lens on a film camera, you will be limited in this situation. You can use this lens effectively. I would advise shooting this lens using a monopod, like I did, or locked down on a tripod, especially if you're doing video. Looking at the images, uh, the lens has a reasonable sharpness, but it seems to lack that resolution, that, that cl clean resolution. It is however still satisfactory in my opinion, it's, it's relatively sharp, and it's worthy to note that the focus is absolutely critical, and softness should not be put past human error in this case. The lens is slightly less contrasty than other FD lenses, and the colors are maybe not as vibrant as I'm used to on other lenses, but honestly, that is a feature that you find in long focal length lenses. It does seem to have a dulling effect uh, in my experience. The lens shows some vignetting, but it is minimal and it's generally only visible when the images are underexposed. And in most cases, it's actually completely negligible. There's a remarkable lack of chromatic aberration for this focal length. It's designed to limit this phenomenon. The lens shows really little ghosting in highlight areas as opposed to even much shorter focal length lenses that I have. This could also be attributed to one, the SEC coating, but also the design of this lens. Distortion is not an issue at this focal length anyways, except one has to get used to the remarkable compression that you get. Due to the focal length, it compresses images front to back and the foreshortening effect is increased significantly. But this is the case for any 500 millimeter lens, not just this one. Or if you harness incorrectly, it can lead to images that seem incredibly busy with very little discernible separation from subject to background. But when subjects and backgrounds are managed uh, and you manage it well and you create distance, this lens creates a really good separation between subject and background. Using the lens for a rugby match is fun, it's exciting, but not advised if you're looking to create a collection of sharp, in the moment images. Because of the manual focus, uh, pre-focusing is required, but it's difficult on a long focal length because you need to uh, anticipate what's going to happen and sudden changes in distance can leave you struggling to catch up with the subject and leaving you with a bunch of out of focus images or badly composed images and also because you're working in a fixed focal length by any measure that is quite long you end up being restricted to uh, passages of play that that is actually taking place on the other side of the field. You'll need another body with a short lens to do anything that's close to you. Now this can be useful, uh, it brings you very close to the action. A rugby field is 70 meters wide and this lens covered full length images of players with very little headspace to spare uh, at that distance. Uh, a rugby field is about 106 meters long and including the goal, in goal areas, so you could reasonably be standing on the one side and capture images uh, of player happening on the other side of the field. Um, and as long as you know, you're not too close to the action, this lens actually covers the field very nicely. Uh, using the lens to shoot little video clips or video is, is fun, but a monopod or more specifically a tripod is very necessary. And I would refrain from too many camera movements and it is because the, any movement is hugely amplified uh, by a 500 millimeter focal range, but it creates beautiful uh, tight compositions. Now to the thing that lens aficionados love talking about, bokeh or bokeh. Uh, because of the compression one gets with this focal length, these bokeh shapes can be very prominent in an image because it brings the background close to the subject. And, and it can be a bit distracting because you have these really bright rings that's created. But if you use it well, I think it can be fun. If however the background is not too contrasty, the bokeh is actually quite manageable, flowy and soft in some cases, but this is not the norm, I must be honest. 
Now some nature photographers like, or if you're a guy who photographs surfers, you might need something that's even longer in focal length. And you can increase the focal length or double it by using an FD two times teleconverter. But you have to bear in mind that this is gonna cost you another two stops of light, effectively putting you to the same amount of light you'll get from having an F16 lens without the added benefit of depth of field. But this is a thousand millimeter lens in a very, very compact package. So that concludes our um, discussion of the Canon Reflex lens, the 500 millimeter F8 SSC. Please subscribe. I'll be quite frank. Please subscribe to my channel and please leave a comment. And if you have more information on this lens than I have offered, please share it with us. Consider pressing that like button. You know, the algorithm gods, they seem to like that stuff and the notification thing. And uh, why not share it around on your forums? That can help me out a whole lot just to get a community of vintage people loving vintage lenses together. But uh, enough from me. I will see you in the next one.